Hello everyone, welcome to the next lecture on the optimization technique. Today we will discuss the Lagrange multiplier method when there are two equality constraints. Remember that this Lagrange multiplier method is applicable only when constraints are of equality sign. Myself, Dr. Garg, working in the School of Mathematics, Thapar Institute, India. You can contact me as usual through my either of the email IDs or else you can simply follow this link for more updated videos on optimization technique. What we have discussed in the last lecture is Lagrange multiplier method with only one constraints are there and which is of equality sign. Look at that. We have discussed this such type of the problem in the last lecture where there is only one constraint. Now in this lecture we will see when there are more than one constraints it may be the two, three and so on. We will apply the same way what we have discussed in the last lecture to the this method. What is the uh, constraint optimization problem is look at that these constraints must be of the equality sign in order to apply this Lagrange multiplier method. And what is the purpose of this Lagrange multiplier is which has the constraint optimization problem to convert into the non uh, convert into the unconstrained optimization problem by using this function L which is called as the Lagrange, uh, Lagrangian function and f of x is my objective function g of x is my constraint and this lambda is called as the Lagrange multiplier and which is unrestricted in sign. So since this is unrestricted sign, so either you can use the plus or you can use the minus that's as per your convenience. So you can use any one of them. Once you will convert into the Lagrange function, then the necessary condition for finding the maximum or minimum is partial derivative of x l with respect to x and lambda must be zero. Once you are solving these two equations, we will get this point. This point is called as the stationary point. After finding the stationary point, we will apply the sufficient condition to check whether the point is maxima or minima. How we can check whether that? We will compute this matrix that is called as the border Hessian matrix and this is form of 0, u, u transpose and v. The size of this matrix is m plus n, m plus n. What is that means? Number of the constraints like, like say this. How many constraints are there? n is my number of the decision variables. How you find the u? u is nothing but my partial derivative of this constraints with respect to the x and v is nothing but my partial second order partial derivative of this l with respect to x. Once we will construct this matrix then now it has m plus n cross m plus n size. So we have to find the principal minors. Remember there are the two conditions one is on the 2m plus 1 and this is n minus m. This n minus m conditions will tell us how many minors we will calculate. This is tell us how many minors we will calculate. But since this the size is m plus n cross m plus n and this 2m plus 1 will tell us from where tell us from where we can start. From where we can start. So remember that. So this n minus m will tell us how many minors will be calculated and 2m plus 1 will tell us that from where we can start. Once we will comp compute all the principal minors at this point, then we will check whether they are of the alternating signs. Provided the first sign will be of this nature, then it's the maximum. And if they are same sign as that of this, remember if they are alternative, then it's the maximum. If they have the same sign, then it's a minimum starting from this or this. Let's discuss some examples. We will follow the same rule. Look at that, how many constants are there? There are the two constants. And look at that, what is the nature of the x1, x2, x3? It is clearly seen that they are my unrestricted in nature because x1, x2 is not greater than 0. So first thing is we have to define the Lagrangian function. That is f of x, this is my fx. The first constant g1, second constant g2. So after substitute the value of here, this is the fx. g is now, right hand side must be 0. So I can take 2 on the left hand side. This is the third, second constraint. Once you are defining this L, now we can define the necessary condition. How many variables are there? One is the x1, x2, x3, lambda 1 and 2. All must be 0. For example, if you take the partial derivative of this with respect to x1, it gives to 2x1 minus lambda 1 minus of 5 lambda 2 is 0. Similarly for the second and so on. Once we will compute, all we get here. Now remember that we will follow the same method which I discussed here for all the uh, other problem as well as the remaining ones. So from the first one, we will find the value of the x1. From the second, we will find the value of x2. From third, we will find the value of x3 and so on. So look at that from here, we can find the value of x1. 
from second we can find the value of x2 from third we can find the value of x3 now after substitute this value of x1 x2 x3 in these two equations 4 and 5 the resultant equation will be in terms of lambda 1 and lambda 2 like this way we can substitute the value in fourth after, after simplify we will get this equation similarly after substitute in equation number 5 we will get here now these two equations are lambda 1 and lambda 2 you can simply solve with the help of the calculator you can simply solve it with the help of calculator you will get these two equations once you will get the lambda 1 lambda 2 we can substitute the value of this in x1 x2 x3 we will get these three points are hence the stationary point will be x1 x2 x3 lambda 1 and 2 to check whether this point is a maximum or minimum what we will do we will apply the sufficient condition we will check the border Hessian matrix that is u v and there first of all what is the size of this we will check what is the m what is the n m is my number of the constants look at that this is my original problem how many constants are there two how many variables are there three so it will be my five cross five m plus n m plus n now what is the value of u all of you know that what is the u is partial derivative of this with respect to x so you can see that so what is the part this is my g now the size is 2 so it will be my 2 cross matrix so what is the first derivative with respect to x size first one is with respect to x1 then x2 then x3 similarly for here this is my u 1 that is partial derivative of g with respect to x1 partial derivative of g1 with respect to x2 and so on similarly for here and what is the v is partial second order partial derivative this means partial derivative with respect to x1 square this means partial derivative with respect to x1 x2 this means partial derivative with respect to x1 x3 and so on so once we will calculate u and v now look at this is a transpose we can substitute this value in here so look at that this 0 is my nothing but a 2 cross 2 here now the size is my 5 cross 5 so now our task is to calculate the principal minus how many principal minus we will calculate for this hb that will tell us about the n minus m so what is the n value of the n minus 1 is 1 it means we compute only the one principal minor what is the order of the first principal minor is is it d1 d2 d3 4 and 5 that will tell us from the 2m plus 1 what is that 2m plus 1 is m is my 2 it is 5 so therefore we will calculate the one principal minor whose size is 5 what is the principal minor whose size is 5 that is itself we will calculate and it comes to be 460 now check what is the sign of this is it of here then it will be of maximum if it is of minus 1 raised to power m then it will be of minimum so what is the m is my 2 so what is that this will be my 5 and it's a negative and but it is a positive so since this is accordance with the sign of here so therefore by the sufficient condition it will give a minimum point. now we will apply the same method for this second example again you can see now look at that this is optimized either it can be maximum or minimum we will see what will happen we can define the l by using the 2 l lambda 1 you can take as a plus as you wish because if it is a uh, unrestricted variable again there are the five uh, unknown parameters we will take the necessary conditions as here again from the first equation we will take the value of x1 and x2 like this here from third you can easily find the value of x2 like this and so on how you find the value of x1 x2 and so on so you can simply see if we can from the first and two can you if you simply add what will happen this is nothing but my here so from the equation this you can take the value of x1 similarly you can substitute the value of x1 in either of the equation you will get the value of x2 it means by by solving 1 and 2 you can get the value of x1 and x2 already we have known the value of the x3 so x1 and x2 we already calculated x3 we already known so we can substitute the value of x1 x2 x3 in these two equations that is 4 and 5 after substituting these two equations we will get these results out there now you can simplify these two equations with the help of the calculator you will get the value of lambda 1 and lambda 2 here after finding these two values we can substitute the value here you will get the value of x1 x2 and x3 therefore the stationary point is here 
to check whether this point is maximum or minimum we have to calculate the Hessian matrix like this way in this again case m is my 2 n is my 3 so it will be again 5 cross 5 what is the value of the u is look at that this is the matrix so what is the partial derivative of this is 1 again his 1 this is 1 this is 2 minus 1 and so on so remember that if for example if my problem is like this way so then it will be my 2x2 and so on so similarly from here you can find the value of v as this once after finding this value you can substitute the value here you can see here so if in now we have to find the value at x1 x2 x3 lambda 1 and lambda 2 if any of the values appear here we can substitute the value correspondingly here so now it is a 5 cross 5 so we will check how many principal minus we will compute that will tell us about n minus m so we will compute only one principal minus what is the size of this principal minor that will tell us about that 2m plus 1 so that is a 5 so we will compute the 5 cross 5 matrix that is a itself matrix system so now it will be of the positive side so if check whether this is a sign of according to this or according to this it will happen for the maximum it will happen for the minimum so since this is the sign corresponding to this because m is my 2 so it will be positive what is the m plus n is 5 so it will be negative so therefore this stationary point is my minimum look at one more example we will again apply the same rule Again, there are the unrestricted, whatever is there. So, we will define the L value. How many decision variables are there? Now, in this case, x1, x2, lambda1 and lambda2. There are the 4 are there. So, after derivative this, we can see what is the derivative with respect to x1 is 6 minus 2x1 minus 4 lambda1 minus 3 is 0. This is with respect to here. Similarly, for the others, we can compute here. Again, we will follow the same rule. From the first, we can find the value of the x1 second from the find of the x2 we will get these four equations so look at that we can substitute the value of the x1 x2 in these two equations else we can simplify these two equations and we can find the value of the x1 easily we can find the value of x2 after finding the value of x1 and x2 from the third and fourth we can substitute the value here this will give you the value of the lambda 1 and lambda 2 that's depending upon you but I follow the same rule as we discussed in the last two example. From the equation 1, we can find the x1, x2. We can substitute both the values in third and fourth. We can get these values. Are there. We can substitute these two values, x1 and x2, in here. Now look at that. This is the value of the lambda 1 and lambda 2. After simplify, we can get the value of this. Once you know the lambda 1, lambda 2, you can substitute the value of the calculated x1 and x2. You can get this point therefore your stationary point will be here again to check whether this point is the maximum or minimum we have to again draw the border Hessian matrix look at that what is my u is the derivative of the g constant that is a 4 3 3 5 look at that this is my u and this is the u transpose what is the v is partial derivative now it's a 2 cross 2 because there are the two variables so it will be x1 square partial derivative with respect to x1 x2 this is l of x2 x1 and this will be x2 square so what is that this is my nothing but minus of 2 this will be the 0 0 and minus of 2 here now it will be my m plus and there is a 4 cross 4 so how many principal minor you will try to calculate 0 and minus m is 0 it means we will calculate nothing and what is that 2m plus 1 is 5 but the size of this is only 4 cross 4 how we can solve such type of the problem for this we have to calculate all the four principal minors are there what is the first principal minor is in which the first principal diagonal entries is there that is a zero what is the second is in which the first two diagonal entries will be there so the answer is again zero what is the third is will we take the first three diagonal entries here so the rest values are this Again, that determinant will be 0 and the fourth one is itself. Now, if you think about something, then the first three minors will always be a 0. So, for that, we have to calculate only the fourth principal minor and after finding the determinant of this, it gives to here. Again, you can check whether this is, the, uh, is of this or is of this. Now, in this case, you can see both are of the greater than sign. 
but remember if it is a maximum then it must has the alternating sign but it is not be there because the first principal minor is 0 second is 0 third is 0 and the fourth principal minor is positive but they are not alternating sign so it means this is not the maximum so therefore it is of the sign minus 2 is this positive so it will give a minimum point so this is a simple method you can apply to solve the Lagrange method with the help of two or more than two constraints are there. I hope again you can enjoy this session. You can uh, ask your doubts here. We will see the next lecture on the KKD condition. That's the most important thing in the non-linear programming. Till then, best of luck students. You can simply follow this link for more updated videos. Thank you very much.